after that testimony. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, we come together this morning, Lord, just thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Father God, because of who you are, Lord God, that we know that you are God, oh God, that you are God. And we thank you this morning, Lord. We lift you up, oh God. We praise your holy name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, Father God. We thank you for saving us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for forgiving us of our sins, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, to be able to come together in your presence, oh God, and to hear, Father God, how you move in a mighty way, oh God, upon us, oh God. How you send your blessings down upon us, God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can come into your house, God, to praise your name, God, to lift you up, oh God, to glorify you, Lord. We thank you today, God, and we ask this day, Lord, this day, God, that you would have your way in our lives, Father God, in the service, Lord God. Pour out your spirit in here today, God. Let your presence be known, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, God. Let there be signs and wonders and miracles, Lord God, following your word, oh God, that your word will come forth with power, God, power of the Holy Spirit to fill each and every one of us, oh God, that we will not go home the same way we came, oh God, that you will change us, oh God, that we will have boldness, confidence, oh God, that we will not be ashamed nor afraid, oh God, to say Jesus is Lord. Father God, we thank you today, God. Thank you, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done, oh God. And you get all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
everybody doing this morning? Um, in the congregation, how are you all doing this morning? Good. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I love hearing the testimonies, don't you? That truly was a testimony of God's loving kindness and tender yeah. mercies. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Come on, church, let it's me hear you. Do I live for every day? Do I live? Do I live for every day? Do, oh God, it's you I live for every it's day. Only you, oh God, it's you I live for every day. Oh, it's you, it's you I live for every day. It's you I live for.
calls me friend. Worship you, Father God. Don't you love the presence of the Lord? I love the presence of the Lord. Nothing, nothing compares to it. Nothing.
wonderful Savior. Glory. Wonderful Savior. Glory. None like you, Lord. Oh, None like God, you. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, you woke us up this morning. Hey, with a brand new day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, you're so worthy to be praised, God. So worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Where would I be without you, Lord? Where would I be? Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Glory, Glory to God. None like you, Lord. None like you. Hey, Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Glory. Woo. Yay, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory. Glory. I say. Come on, praise him a minute. Just like that, right there. If you can't praise him in church, I know you're not saying nothing to him about God outside the building. I know you're not. If you ain't saying nothing about it, if you ain't praising him in church, you ain't even talking about him outside the building. You ain't saying nothing about him. Not one thing. If you ain't brave enough to put your hands together and praise him in church, don't tell me you're saying something about him on the outside. Because I know you're not doing it. Come on, praise him a minute. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Come 
God never puts some more on us than we can handle. <laughs> Isn't that right, Regina? <clears throat> God never puts more on us than we can handle. Slip your hands up now and just in silence. Nobody say nothing in silence. I don't want to hear nobody do anything. And I just want you to stand there and worship God for a second. In your spirit, just worship the Lord. <laughs> remember, God never puts more on you than you can handle. Never. The task may seem huge, may seem big. But if he's called you to do it, you're going to be able to do it. No matter what you go through, he's going to be able to pull you through it. Keep your eyes on him. Mighty God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. For vengeance is mine, saith God. I will repay. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Stand still and know that I'm God. Don't put your hands in the mix. Let me do it. Vengeance is mine, saith God. I will repay. Don't look to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. Look up. Up to the mountains where your help comes from. And stand still and know that I'm God. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty Savior. Eyes closed. Please don't be looking at me. Sometimes in life or in the ministry, this burden seems so big and weighs you down. God says, know that I am God. Know that I'm a provider. Know that I'm a deliverer. And understand that I am the one that gives you the ability to get wealth. Some of you are chasing the boat and it's not even left the dock yet. Mighty God. You're questioning God. There's a few people in here today. Lift your hands up with your eyes closed. Questioning God, what should I do? Where shall I go? What shall I do? Give me direction, mighty God. Give me direction. Did you get direction in the beginning before it all got messed up? And we cry, God, God, where is your direction? And we're the ones that's messed it up. Know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Don't move your feet until I move your heart. Don't change your direction until you hear from me. Mighty God. Mighty God. Jesus, mighty God. <clears throat> Comes crying in their heart, Father, give us change. Give me change. Touch us, Father God. Give me change. You wouldn't accept it if he did. Mighty God. Lift your hands up over your head. Feel the healing power of God right now. Who, mighty God. Jealousy is not of God. Got to get it. I got to hang on to this source. I feel the healing power of God right now. Keep your hands up. The Bible says, many are called, but few are chosen. 
I have called many into my kingdom, but few are chosen for the task that is set before them. As I count to three, I want you to let God heal your body, your mind, and your heart. One, two, three. Let him touch you right now. God is a healer. Men are liars. God is the healer. God is the healer. Stand still. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Hands lifted up, please. <clears throat> Ushers, keep your eyes open. Go on down there with them, brother. Because they're going <clears> to... <throat> Eyes closed, hands lifted up, please. God's a healer. God's a healer. I can feel there's people in here that God is calling, calling. Answer the call. Answer the call. Answer the call. Who? Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty God. The anointing is here right now for healing. Don't say anything. With your eyes closed for another moment, please. One last time with your hands lifted over your head, please. One last time. Hands lifted up. I want to count to three and let the Lord heal you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Healing power of God move in this ministry. Healing power in this ministry. Don't touch anybody. <clears throat> Healing power of God over this ministry. Who, mighty God. Jesus. 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 Jesus, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, Jesus, mighty God, the divine power, mighty God, mighty God. Mm. Jesus, 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 mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. <clears throat> mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty Jesus. Mighty Jesus.
Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty Jesus. <clears throat> Stand still, please, with your eyes closed. If you'd like me to lay hands on you, come right down this way and come right up this way. <clears throat> right down this way and up this way. <clears throat> come quickly, <clears throat> quickly, quickly. <clears throat> Hi there. <laughs> Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty Lord. Mighty God. Jesus, mighty Savior, thank you for your healing power, Father God. Thank you for your healing power. Bring next up. Thank you, Jesus. Now, was you guys, when I was counting to three, was you guys down there receiving that? Huh? You was? For you or for your sister? <laughs> Jesus. Lift your hands up. Glory to God. You believe God can heal you? Yes, Jesus. Yes, Mighty Lord. God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, was you saying three with me when I went, went one, two, three, like that? You were? Yes. <clears throat> Was you doing one, two, three with me when I lift your hands up? Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Whoo, Jesus, Jesus, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God. Mm. Mm. Was you doing that with me? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's calling you, huh? He's, whoo, power of God's all over you. The anointing of the Lord's all over you. Why'd you come up for prayer? Go ahead and tell me. Direction. Oh. Don't you already know what to do? Hmm? Go ask my wife, she'll tell you. Go there and ask her. Jackie will tell you. Whisper in her ear, she'll tell you. <clears throat> Next, come quickly. <clears throat> yes. Why did you come up? To walk in my car. Lift your hands up. Did you count three with me? One, two, three. did you do it the second time with me? Yes. Jesus. <clears throat> gonna be a lot of voices that's gonna try to make you listen to them brother you better not listen <clears throat> a lot of voices try to pull people and drag them out and move them into other garbage isn't that right <laughs> lift your hands up why'd you come up for prayer glory touch him right now father God in the name of Jesus, mighty God. Yes, 
Exactly. From his feet to the top of his head, from his head to the bottoms of his feet, Father yes, God. Yes, thank you, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Strengthen him, Father God. <clears throat> Is that it? <clears throat> Whew, man. Yep. Yeah, why did you come up for prayer? Um, just general for my family and for myself. Strength, just... yes, Father God. Keep strength. Give her strength, Father God. Touch her right now, Almighty God. Refresh in her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together just for a minute, guys. <clears throat> One more. <clears throat> Woo, mighty God. And I'm in agreement with you, brother. I'm in agreement with you. I'm in total agreement with you. Amen. Thank you. I stand here in agreement with you right now in Jesus' name. I'm in agreement with you. <coughs> Is that it? Hallelujah. Oh, brother, I like them shoes, man. <coughs> I love wingtips, brother. I'm a wingtip kind of guy. Huh? Oh, is that? <laughs> I bet you don't got no thick and thins, though, do you? I bet you ain't got no thick and thins. I'm going to find us some more, brother. I am. <clears throat> Does he? Where did he get them at? Long time ago. Da, 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 da. Goodwill. <clears throat> That's where we got them. I don't know if they just have them sometimes, or <clears throat> I don't know what the deal is with that. <clears throat> Let's slip our hands up for a minute. Worship God just for a second. <coughs> yeah, call him and find out, would you? <coughs> That's a good idea. <coughs> Regina, I think God's good. Something big. I, God's going to ask you to do something, sister. I don't think it has anything to do with what we were talking about. But it's going to be... Uh, <coughs> hard for you to do it. I don't think it's what we were talking about. You only on a few weeks. <coughs> Put your hands lifted up, please. Worship God just for another second, please. Whew, I feel such an anointing. Mm. <coughs> Where Larry? Oh, there he is. And there you are. I want to tell all of you something. <clears throat> that something was brought to my attention. It never even dawned on me that people would <clears throat> could think something different. <clears throat> when I'm preaching or ministering, teaching, whatever I'm doing at the time, <clears throat> I might not even be talking to you. Sometimes I'm just talking to that camera. <clears throat> so if you hear something, you go, <clears throat> take offense at it, come up and ask me about it. Because it might not even be for the congregation. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> good. <clears throat> I feel good today. <clears throat> How you guys feel? Do you feel like you've been in God's presence? I was like, two scriptures kind of uh, get me motivated and get me thinking. There's two of them in scripture that really um, <clears throat> stir my spirit. And one of them to start with is Revelations 1 6. <clears throat> That's, it just stirs me up a little bit. Revelations 1 6. <clears throat> and hath made us kings and priests unto God. Would you read five? Read verse. Five and six. <laughs> and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto and the what? <coughs> prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that hath loved us 
and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now read six. And hath made us <coughs> kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now there's another one, Revelation 5.10. And I want everybody to read this with, with Jackie. Read this verse. <coughs> And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. <clears throat> now I want to bring something out right here. Um, <clears throat> Revelations 1.6 is before the snatching away of the church. Revelations 1.6 is before the snatching away of the church. Revelations 5.10 is afterwards. <clears throat> after the <clears throat> taking away of the church. <clears throat> So I wanted to look up, and which I have done many a time. <clears throat> I've looked up in Scripture to see what kings and priests were. And if you take umbrage at this message today, just ask God to give you the right spirit. <clears throat> he says, I've made you kings and priests unto God. Unto him, not to each other. <clears throat> unto God. <clears throat> so I started looking in Scripture. I wanted to first find out what a king was. And I know what a king is, but I wanted to make sure so I wrote it down right. <clears throat> He's a ruler. He's a ruler. A king is a ruler. He rules over something. He's ruling over something. A king is. <clears throat> and it's more than that. He's a possessor of supernatural power. I want you to lift your hands up for a minute. <clears throat> and say this back with me. Say, if I am a king, <clears throat> that makes me a ruler. And if I'm a ruler, I have supernatural power. Okay, so it tells us just by those few little words that our rulership is not of this world. Has nothing to do with this world. Although we'd like it to be. How many of you would like to be a king in this natural world? Lift your hands up. You wouldn't want to be a ruler? You want to be a lead? You want to be someone that's being led, huh? Okay, that, that'll work. <laughs> That's what you want to do. <laughs> because whatever you're doing now is what Satan sees you as. Now I want you to say this back with me again. Say, ruler, ruler. possessor of supernatural power. <clears throat> That's what a king is. Now a priest is a mediator or an intercessor. Jesus was our mediator and our intercessor. He stood in between us and God, and now he stands in between us and Satan. Wave at me. How many of you remember Flip Wilson? Nobody? What was his favorite saying? The devil made me do it. Kings don't talk like that, that way. Priests don't talk that way. And I was looking through here, Jackie, and I was kind of popping through here. We're kings without visible crowns. You can't see these crowns. Satan can see them. Can he touch them? No, nope, can't touch this. <laughs> so I'm looking through Scripture, and I'm trying to find out what these kings can do and who they are. And we know that Jesus is the supreme, supreme king. He's Lord of Lords, and we don't want to compare ourselves to him, <clears throat> which we could never do anyway. <clears throat> but according to Scripture, Jesus was without limits in the spirit realm. And God can move on any king or priest at any time without limits. Lift your hands up for a minute. How would you like to understand yourself in the spirit world the way Satan does? We don't understand ourselves that way. Here's the way we understand ourselves. Usually on the outside we look at ourselves and we think how beat up we are, how tormented we are, and how Satan attacks. He, Satan looks at you as being the righteousness of God through Christ. And he sees a crown of gold that's upon your head because you're a ruler. You have supernatural power, and he sees it, and he understands it. The trick is, he has to make you not understand it, and he's doing a good job. Lift your hands up for a minute. Say, Father, we have to understand one thing in life. In life right now. 
that you have made us exactly who we are. And if we'll get comfortable in that, you'll teach us how to rule and reign right now. now most people try to make people think they're a king or think they're a priest. And Satan already knows that. And it says that the wealth of the wicked, somebody say this with me, say the wealth of the wicked is heaped up for the righteous. How do you get your hands on that? How does that happen? How does, that, how does this thing work? We have to make Satan understand we know who we are so he can move on his kingdom, Satan's kingdom, and make them bring in the wealth. Lift your hands up for a minute. Somebody stand up to your feet a minute. I want you to suck that in for a second. Listen to what I'm saying to you. <clears throat> He knows you for who you are. He knows you. When he looks at you, he sees blood. He sees something that he cannot touch unless you open the door. <laughs> Get, put your hands up unless you open the door. If you open the door through sin, he comes in. If you are clean, he can't touch you. He can't come nowhere near you. But when you open the door... Here he comes. And what's he do? He gets you to bow down to his kingdom. A king bowing down to a being that has been thrown out of heaven? Shouldn't work that way. But Pastor Mark, I, 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 I don't understand. Then why am I going through all this? To get you to understand who we are. In God, in Christ. Not who we brag to be. Put your hands up. Not who we brag to be, but who we are in Christ. Now, I want you to have a seat there for a minute and let's find out. <clears throat> Proverbs 16, 14. If we could read that, Jackie. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. Read it to him again. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. Now we're going to flip this over into the New Testament. Just talking about a king here. He has death in his word. And we're going to flip this around to the New Testament. It says, power... And death is in the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. He says, if I've made you kings and priests, then you're going to have to start talking right. You're going to have to start addressing the world in that way. And we don't do that. We blame each other. Or we blame the world for our demise. And it's all laid out and it's achievable. I want you to do me a favor. Look at the person next to you and say, I have changed my life with the power of my tongue. I've changed it. I've accepted Jesus Christ as the ruler and king of my life. And now with this power and authority, I can rule in the supernatural. So Proverbs 16, 14, power of death, the king has. Proverbs 16, 15. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. <coughs> and, his, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. Thursday we talked about the former and latter rain. How many of you is here Thursday night? Former and latter rain. What's this saying right here? And his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. Now we're crying out for the latter rain, aren't we guys? But you didn't realize because Satan is so slick that there is a cloud of favor all the way around you of the latter rain. Put your hands up for a minute. Suck this in for a second. Say, I'm sucking it in right now. Latter rain, 
There's a cloud all around me. There's a cloud all around me. When somebody calls you up and says, I need you to lay your hands on me, immediately that cloud should go and do that. Because that's the cloud of the latter rain. It doesn't matter what you see, what you hear, or what you think. God says, I have made you a ruler in the spiritual realm, and Satan has stopped that. Put your hands in here. King, priest, king, ruler, possessor of spiritual power or supernatural power. Power of the tongue to kill, power of the tongue to bring life. And the favor of the cloud, the cloud of the latter rain is all around you. How many of you are ready to recognize it? How many of you willing to say, Pastor Mark, I'm willing to press for right with that cloud. I'm willing to press in so the natural man can see it. So you don't have to make me understand your gift. I don't have to see your gift. I know you have a gift. I, I, I know you, some of you have the gift of healing. I understand that. I see it. You don't have to, you don't have to convince me. You got to show the world that there's a cloud about you. A cloud about you that is the latter rain. So he said, now I'm going to bless you with the latter rain. He said, the latter rain is going to be much greater than the former rain, Sister Jackie. Much greater than the former rain. I believe the church is going to recognize who we are in the spirit realm and quit trying to be kings and priests in the natural realm so Satan will step back and go, they know who they are. They know who they are. Get up and give God praise for a minute. (laughs) They know who they are. They know who they are. <clears throat> Man, I tell you, I want to know who I am, don't you? Don't you want to know who you are? Don't you want to be able to stand up and say, Satan, you knew who I was all the time. You had me fooled. Now I know who I am. Words cannot kill me. Your Your uh, fake power cannot destroy me. Your lies cannot kill me because he... He is in me, and there's this cloud of the latter rain all around me. It's all around you. So when you walk around people that are not saved, don't think they're going to act the way you act. They're not going to. That cloud of that latter rain that is around you either brings offense or submission. Offense or submission. You've been around people, and you say, why are they so ugly? They're not saved, first of all. They have no cloud of the latter rain. You're the one that has it. You're the one that has to change their life with the power that's in your tongue. We're not doing it. Have a seat. So the power of death is in the king's tongue. We found that out. There's favor of the latter rain around you. It's around you. It's around you all the time. It's there. You can visibly see it. Sometimes you can. Well, sometimes you can visibly see it. The natural man, the natural man says there's an aura about you. Isn't that what the natural man says? Well, he doesn't understand it. I had a person tell me that one day, years years ago, when I was working in the hospital. This person called me and said, there's an aura about you. Well, I didn't even know what the person was talking about. Aura. Well, I'm so dumbfounded and so dead, I didn't, I didn't realize the cloud of the latter rain was around me. And the natural man sees it as an aura. It's not an aura. It's the Holy Spirit, the blessings of that. Yes. Favor as a cloud about you. And then we stop the favor. We stop the cloud, the movement of the cloud. The minute you say something wrong, about, especially about somebody in Christ, you say something that's wrong or you start uh, uh, not doing what's right. The cloud ceases the blessing. It can't go any further. Lift your hands up. Uh, Say, yeah. Yeah. Say it again. Say, yeah, I received that. So the clouds around you. Proverbs 28. Let's see what it says. Kings. Kings 28. 28. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. 
Say it, read it to him again. <coughs> a king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Now, most people, when I say this next statement, they're going to go, no, we're not judge. We're not judges. Yeah, you are judges. Yes, you are. You are a judge. Because God has given you what to judge with. Most people look at you and they go, you can't judge me. Well, I'm a king and scripture has already judged it. I'm not judging you. Scripture has already done it. There's no way out. Pastor Mark, you're a judger. No, I'm not a judger. I'm scattering sin with judgment as a judge. Put your hands in there and receive that. So when somebody tells you and looks at you and they say this to you, you're a judger. You're judging me. God has already judged you, condemned you, and if you're not born again, sent you to hell unless you repent. You're already judged. So that's what a king does. Scatters sin with his judgment. Well, who, who made you a judge? God. 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 That's why you hear ministers, are, they, they uh, minister, well, they go too far. They minister about sin all the time. Bah, 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 sin. They just kept trying to scatter it out of their midst because they know what it's doing to the movement of the spirit. And it will never work because it's under the wrong kind of judgment. It's under their judgment and not God's judgment. Amen. You find it in Scripture and you use it, that's God judging it. Amen. He's judged it. And the Christians will probably pay for it <clears throat> because of what we believe. And we have strong beliefs, or at least we should have strong beliefs. I have very strong beliefs in certain things. <clears throat> um, Proverbs 24, 21 and this is far from the church. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Now, my son, fear thou the Lord and the, and the king. Uh, not to place us in a kings of this earth, but this is, should be taking place on the earth. Non-believers should be fearing us and they don't because they don't recognize the position we're in. They'll never recognize it until they begin to see that cloud and the power that's on your words. And then they'll begin to recognize it and they'll go, whoa, I'm going to have to bring respect, not to just God, but to the kings in the church or in the body of Christ. And we are, that's what God said we were. And not to pull this out and run out of here and go, I got this crown. The natural man can't see it. He's never going to be able to see it like Satan sees it. And he's got us tricked. The enemy, Satan's got us tricked because he knows who we are. And if he can make us think that he can beat us, he's going to make you think that. If he can make you think that you're not a king or a priest, he's going after it with everything he's got. And then the church stands there empty-handed. What's happened? What's going on, Pastor Mark? <clears throat> Proverbs 29 and 4, and some of you may not agree with this, but I've searched these out. These are not pulled out of context. Proverbs is all kinds of Proverbs. <laughs> Go. The, the king by judgment establishes the land, and he that receiveth gifts <clears throat> overthroweth it. Read it to him again. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthrows it. Now I want you to say this with me. I want you to say a Proverbs 29 4. A king can stabilize, have influence upon people. That's what they do, they have influence. A king has great influence upon people. What he says is law. That's what a king is. That's what he says is law. But in the spiritual world, we look over there in Timothy, where it says this. The body of Christ should have influence on each other. And I, what I mean by that is influence in the way we walk, talk, and the way we are. Because we're in a position that we have to change hearts. That's what we're called to do is change hearts. So we should be a stabilizing influence to people. 
Proverbs 16.10. And there's three or four scriptures that goes with this, but I, I don't know if I'm going to read them all. Proverbs 16.10. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. Now I want to put that back. I want to put that back with, with judging, but it's kind of self-saying. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. He always has the right thing to say. If you give the word in season and it's right, it edifies and lifts up. Put your hands in there and receive that. Say, if I have the right word, in season, it edifies, lifts up, or builds up. <clears throat> Good. Proverbs 16, 12. Proverbs 16, 12. Read it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Read it to him again. <clears throat> it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Kings, kings, kings should stand for righteousness. They should stand for righteousness. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and we should stand for righteousness on the outside of these walls. Because when we don't, it's all turned upside down. It's all flipped upside down, and Satan comes in and takes over. Proverbs 16, 13. Stick with me, guys, for a moment. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. Kings, you and I, wave at me. Everybody's awake. Delights in truth. They love truth. Do you love truth? Do you love truth when truth is given to you? And it's in a correcting form? You do? Lift your hands up. Say, the man that correcteth with truth loveth the one he corrects. Children that are not corrected are not loved. Children that are corrected, given the right path, directed, taken care of, are loved. You prove that way that you love them. So a king loves truth. Truth. We found out truth when we accepted Jesus Christ. Put your right hand up. Suck this in for a minute. Say, I received Jesus Christ. I received That's, the first truth I received. That's the first truth I received. It's mine. Belongs to me. Nobody can take it. Nobody, Nobody can steal it. But the rest of truth can be fuddled with and messed up. Because truth comes in many different forms. Has many different sides to it. Truth. Jesus Christ. He's Lord. He's also God. And he's also King. So truth has a lot of different sides to it. So when you take truth and you mix it up and make it not right. People believe it. They believe non-truths. Even if their spirit inside them is saying don't receive that. It's not truth. They receive it. They'll take it on and wear it. How many of you today would look at me and say, Pastor Mark, I'm going to begin to seek out my position in Christ so the world can recognize eventually that the church is filled with the power of God. Cloud of witness, ladder rain. Stand to your feet and lift your hands up. I want to pray over you a minute. And I'm stealing communion. I don't know who was doing communion, but I'm taking it. <clears throat> was it you? <clears throat> Sorry, sister. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Now, in the natural, in the natural, you see it every day. In the natural, kings fight against kings all the time. It's what they do in the natural. Nation against nation. Uh, United States against Japan. Uh, blah, blah, whatever. Kings don't fight each other in the spirit realm. Amen. Or they shouldn't. They shouldn't. I'm not telling you not to be wise. I'm telling you that we shouldn't fight each other in the, in the natural. And if the church would just understand that, the power of God would begin to flow in the churches. And until that happens, 
We run out that racism and that hatred. We're going to be boggled up. No power. Dead. Put your hands over your head. Say this with me. As a king, As a king. spiritually speaking, I have to know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. I can't just throw words out there to see where they land. I just can't criticize. I got to stop that. I got to be a man of peace or a woman of peace. To have power from the Holy Spirit, I have to be someone that has peace. Put your hands up. Kings have peace. The only time they don't have peace is when those that are under them mess it up. Isn't that right? Well, who's under you? He's the only one that said it. Who's under you? Where's he at? You can't blame him. He knows who you are. You cannot blame him. The church blames him for everything. Everything because they don't want to stand in accountability for their actions. I can't do it because the devil's made me do it. Or I can't control it because Satan has driven me. He's not driving you anywhere. You're driving yourself. You are driving yourself. And if we'll recognize that, we'll stop blaming each other and the power of God to hit the church. And everybody will recognize their cloud of the latter rain and be a part of the cloud that's moving. That's wanting to touch the world by the power of the resurrection so he can come back and set his kingdom up, man. Give him praise for a minute. Father, we want to recognize who we are. Not to destroy people, but that we can further the kingdom of God. If we can take one person, it only takes one person to change everything. It only takes one. One person, Jackie, that has been tormented since they were a kid and told them, you're not going to do this, you're not going to be this, you're not going to blah, 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 blah. Raise them up and change their heart and their mind. They can change a generation with the power of God. Get that hate out of them. Lift your hands up. Get that hate out of them. Get that torment out of them. My, my, my. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Jackie, can you imagine that? Satan sees your crown. He knows you don't see it. I want you to quit blaming Satan. And I want you to say, Pastor Mark, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to stand up and be accountable. And in being accountable... You'll recognize. That'll be the beginning of recognizing who you are in God. Amen. And Satan has no hold. None. None. Now I'm just going to say it this way. I'm going to call you up here to the front. If you have been spiritually in a war, Everything has been falling apart the last 30 days or two months, whatever it is. I want you to come up here, stand in the front, and lift your hands up. Up here to the front. Come, come. <clears throat> now she said this in Proverbs. <coughs> she read this in Proverbs. <coughs> That the cloud of the latter rain is all around us. It's all around us. And it makes people angry. They don't even know why they're being angry at you. They don't even know why they're treating you the way they treat you. But buddy, Satan knows. Satan knows. Just as you're standing here, lift your hands up over your head. And this is what the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you. Say this with me. If none, if none go, with me, go with me, I will follow. I will. Though none go with me, so none go with me 
I will follow. Father, today, I am recognizing this cloud that is about my being. It's the latter rain. My part of the latter rain. And I have to walk in it and recognize the power that's in it. And I have to do my part. And I will let no one stop me. I set my eyes towards the hills whence comes my salvation or my deliverance. Father, I stand before you today and I would ask that you deliver my mind from my previous thoughts. Victory is mine. Victory is mine, saith God. Victory is mine. No one goes with me. I still follow. My, my, my. Give God praise in here for a moment. <clears throat> Though none goes with me, I will still, I will follow. Now, what I need everybody to do for communion, I want you to all come to the front for communion, please. If everybody could walk to the front <clears throat> for communion. Those that can't, take them communion, brother. Father, mighty God, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Whoo, <clears throat> mighty God, mighty God, <clears throat> mighty God, mighty God, just spread it out. <clears throat> Just walk right down through here and spread it out. <clears throat> Everybody reach out and grab the communion <clears throat> as it goes by you. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Mighty God, <clears throat> mighty God, mighty God, Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. <clears throat> you know that song? You guys used to sing it over there? You used to sing that over there? <clears throat> I didn't know. Jesus, mighty God, <laughs> mighty God, <laughs> mighty God. I know this lady, she used to always, <laughs> uh, when that faith message first started coming out in the 60s, she got a hold of it in the 70s, and she would always run around claiming pink Cadillacs. <clears throat> <laughs> she had her kingship messed up. <clears throat> Satan really had her, man. <clears throat> oh, it was blue Cadillac? I thought it was a pink one. <clears throat> we heard that all the time. 
God's going to give me a blue Cadillac. <clears throat> Get, getting the kingship messed up. <clears throat> getting the kingship messed up. <clears throat> they do? Everybody has it? Everybody's got it? Come here. All right, I want you to just hold the, hold the bread up and just up like, just hold it just like that. And we're not going to break it. So just hold it. <clears throat> See, the world didn't recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as being a king. He wouldn't crown king, but he was king. Had they known it, the scripture says, had Satan have known who he was, he wouldn't have killed him. That was covered. But when he rose from the dead, he knows who we are. He knows. Because in an upper room, when they came down out of there and Peter preached, 3,000 men and women got saved. He went, whoa. Satan did. He said, I just got whipped by that power in, in hell. He just took my keys that belonged to me. And now 3,000 men and women are running around talking in that funny language. He knew, buddy. He knows who you are now. So it says that had Satan known it, he would have never crucified him. He would have never touched him. If he'd have known. See, that's the reason when, um, when uh, Moses died, there was a big fight over his body because Satan had no idea who Messiah was. He thought it was Moses because of all them great things that he did. Nope. Nope. God always sent out a delusion before the real thing came. <clears throat> and so he, he goes to the cross, and, <clears throat> and we, t we do this every Sunday, and he goes to the cross, and he, he gives up his body as a king. And then he's telling us to do the exact same thing. He said, I want you to take your body and make it a living sacrifice. I want you to be a living sacrifice before me. So he's asking us to do the exact same thing that he did. That he did. Now, take it the body. <clears throat> this is the only thing that we cannot emulate. We can't do it. We can when he says, I want your body to be a living sacrifice the way mine was. My body was broken for yours, not bones. His body was broken, beaten. So this is the only thing we can't imitate, is blood. So he says, I'm giving you my godly blood. Your blood doesn't got nothing to do with this. When Satan looks at you, he don't see your blood. He sees a king or a priest standing before him. And the only way he can make you change or blink your eyes is to make you think you're not. And the blood of the covenant is for the forgiveness of sins. And we got that. We're forgiven. God has forgiven us for sins or for sin, Adam's sin. That's the reason you can never, never go back. Never. Who would want to argue that? The Baptists, they say, you can be saved one second, or that, the Pentecostals say you can be saved one second and dead the next. The Baptists say, once you're saved, you're always saved. Who would want to fight against that? How could you go back and be born again a third time or a fourth time or a fifth time? You can't. So what we stand now before God is sons of God that can be chastised or kings and priests that can be chastised before God. And when God chastises a king, he don't do it the way he would the world. It's totally different. He does it spiritually. And boy, it hurts. It hurts. He can make you think you, his presence is not there and it is there. You can drift that far away and think his presence isn't there. So when you take of the blood, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take of the blood for what it's done for me so I can be a minister to the world, a king, someone with supernatural power. 
and a priest, an intercessor before the world so I can intercede on my, my family's behalf or my friends or whatever you're interceding be before. And Jesus takes it to the throne of God and says, this is what my kings are saying. This is what my kings are interceding for. This is what my kings are praying for. My priests are praying for and interceding for. And Father, I want you to do it because I said if they would do it in my name, I'm held to it. I'll do it. I'll move it. In my name, I'll move heaven and earth for them because I said for my kings, I'd do that. I'd do that for my kings. <clears throat> Lift it up and take you the blood. <clears throat> Please, if you could just... Oh, you get, go ahead and pick them up. <clears throat> Show of hands, how many of you guys understood the judge part? Lift your hands up if you did. <clears throat> how many of you didn't understand the judge part? Lift your hands up. <laughs> no, there's only one or two. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Okay, go out of here and be refreshed, guys, and have a good week, and we'll see you Thursday. We love you. Sister, I think you gave me the wrong phone number. <laughs>